Did you accidentally update your Nest account to integrate with Google and it broke your Home Assistant integration? Well, in today's video, I will show you how to get your Nest working again with a new custom component in Home Assistant. So a few weeks ago, I upgraded my phone to the new Samsung Note 20 Ultra. And when I was going through the setup process, I made a mistake. When going setting up the Nest app, I accidentally clicked on the sign in with Google and went through the process, completely forgetting that that will break the integration with Home Assistant. I didn't discover this until I went back into Home Assistant and found out that my thermostat is completely broken. So I set up to find out how to fix it. So I guess once Nest integrated with Google, they haven't released an updated API for that new integration. Those of us who have updated ourselves are out in the cold. Thanks to USA Red Dragon, a developer on GitHub, there's an unofficial API integration that you can install today to make your Nest start working again with your home assistant. So in today's video, I'll take you through the process of installing and setting this up. It's a little more complicated than one would think. You have to get your token and cookie by using the developer tools in Chrome. So this video will be a little bit long because there's many steps to get through and I do take you through each step in detail. Feel free to use the chapters in the description below to jump around and find the section that you need. Let's get started. Here we are on the page for Bad Nest on GitHub. And so on here, you'll see all the information of what it is, the features that it has, and what it does and doesn't do. A couple of things I wanna note on here is that it is not using a public API, so this could change at any time. Uh, if Google or Nest makes an update to their API and it breaks this integration, you will have to wait till they fix it and then update. So that's a big um, disclaimer. If you're not comfortable with that, then you just have to wait for the new integration to show up with Nest. The author specifically mentions in here that he has only tested it with a single thermostat. And I've only tested it with a single thermostat as well because that's all I have in the Nest universe. They also have not tested the camera integration or Nest Protect. So those things, again, could not function for you or possibly not work in the future. And finally, the third item is I want to make sure you point out that these tokens that you're going to generate are basically access keys to your Nest devices. So keep them safe. Uh, don't post them on your public uh, GitHub repo. Keep them in a secrets.yaml, which I'll show you how to do that next, and treat these like you would any other password. So the first step here is to go ahead and download the code from the repository. So on the main page, click the green code, download, and download the zip, and open up the zip file once it's finished downloading. We're gonna extract it to our downloads folder so it's easy to find and clean up later. Open up the, ma the master file, and you'll see this custom components folder. So you'll need to copy what's in here, which is just bad nest, to your custom components, custom components area in your Home Assistant instance. So in my case, I'll be using the Samba connection via Windows. You can also use something like WinSCP or Terminal if you want to, but I prefer to use the Samba access so I can just do it inside of Windows. Here are all the shares that my Home Assistant shows up. So I'll go into the config, custom components, and this is where I'll drop that new custom component, add nest. Click and drag that in. So now all the required files are on the, are on the Home Assistant instance. And so now we just have to configure them. Now the author mentions that there are two ways of using credentials for this particular custom component. The first one is if you're not using the Google authentication login. So this would be if you're still using the Nest login. I won't go much into this because this one's much simpler. And, and frankly, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I moved the Google authentication. Now I can't use the Nest logon anymore. So this one's more of a traditional. You'll actually go in and get a username. You'll go in and get a user ID and an access token. Um, by navigating to the Nest website. Very similar to how we're gonna do for the Google one, but uh, if that happens to be what you're looking to do, if that happens to be the method that you wanna use, um, let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a quick explanation video. The one that we care about is the Google Auth look. So to use that one, we have to do some extra steps to retrieve those using the developer tools in your browser. Open up an incognito window. Make sure you disable the 
block third party cookies feature that's been recently added to Chrome because Nest will not let you log in if you have that enabled. We'll go up here to the three dots, more tools and developer tools. So then we need to go to the network tab and tick the preserve log button. So that way we can maintain the logs throughout even with refresh. So once you've done those two items, uh, in the filter box right here, we wanna type in issue token. This will help us find the token when it is inserted by the browser. So next we go to home.nest.com and when it pops up here, go ahead and select the sign in with Google. Type in your email address, your current password. And then if you happen to have two-factor turned on, go ahead and authorize the login on your device. So now on the right tab here, we will see a call using this iframe RPC question mark action. So we'll go ahead and click on it. And then on the headers tab, we see this long string of numbers and characters starting with accounts.google.com and it ends with home.nest.com. So go ahead and bring up a notepad so that you can record this URL and go ahead and go ahead and highlight the entirety of the URL copy and paste that into your notepad. This is going to be your issue token that you'll need for the config.yaml later. We'll minimize your notepad and then we'll go back to the filter box and enter in O off to slash iframe. And you'll see a number of requests here. I have to blur most of this out because it does contain keys that can be used to access my account. So be very careful with these keys. Click on the last iframe call down here. One sec, it's going to go to accounts.google.com slash o slash oauth2 slash iframe. And then again under the headers tab, so scrolling down here to where it says cookie. I'm going to grab everything after the colon in cookie when that first character starts. I'm going to copy that again. And let's paste that into so your cookie. Let's paste that into Notepad. So now that we have our issue token and cookie, we can proceed with the next step, which is adding this information into configuration.yaml. So in this step, we're going to go ahead and set up the configuration.yaml with those two codes that we just put in. So when we go back to the GitHub site, we'll grab the example configuration.yaml for using the Google auth login. So we'll grab these first lines here. Uh, because we'll be doing, in my example, only doing the climate sensor, we'll only be using the bad nest custom configuration and the climate because we don't, I don't have any of the cameras or the other sensors for the nest environment. So we'll go ahead and first thing to do is copy the custom configuration for bad nest uh, and switch over to our configuration.yaml and paste that in. Because I do use the secrets.yaml to hide my tokens, I need to replace this with the name of each of the tokens. So exclamation secrets, and then the name that you've assigned the token in your secrets.yaml. So I'll call this one new nest token and then for the cookie the same thing call it secret new nest and then since i'm in the us my region is us but as they stated on the website you can also make this region eu if you happen to be in the european union so that's finished go ahead and hit save and we're going to go make sure that your instance is secure you want to place your token and cookie in your secrets.yaml. So as you can see here, I have my all of my secure information in secrets.yaml. So I need to create two new tokens for me to reference in the configuration.yaml. So um, the first one, we'll call this one new nest token. And then I'm going to paste in the token from before which of course, again, I'm, I'm blurring out on the screen because it is an actual live token for my system. So I wanna make sure I get that, keep it secure. But it's the same token that we pulled earlier called token. And then I wanna create a second variable called new nest cookie. And we're gonna paste in that other long number. 
by long string into here, and then save. Now the last thing that we have to add in is we have to define the bad nest platform in our client section of our configuration.yaml. So uh, I've already copied that text. I'll pop over here to my configuration YAML. And you already see I have the old nest platform in there. So I'm just gonna add the bad nest one underneath of there, making sure my indents are correct, and set the scan interval to 10. So we'll save the configuration.yaml. Okay. Now that everything's up to date, we will go into the system and check to make sure we didn't make any errors in our code. Okay, the configuration is valid, so we'll go ahead and restart Home Assistant. And then when we get back, we'll check and make sure our climate sensors are working. All right, now that uh, Home Assistant is restarted, everything's back online and started up, go ahead and click on the developer tools. Since this is not official integration, it won't have a bubble in the configuration integrations page, but to find it, we'll go to the developer tools and type in, so typing the word climate to look for the climate devices. And you'll see here, this is my original one, which is showing was unavailable. But if I scroll down, there's now a downstairs thermostat two, which this is the new custom integration version of my thermostat. So you can see what it's set to, the target humidity, what it's set to, operations, presets, everything like that. So um, it works. Now all I have to do is just grab the entity ID. So now we'll go into my, back into my Loveless UI, configure UI, and add a new card, a new thermostat card. And this one will change it to the new correct Entity ID, and go ahead and hit save. And I'll go ahead and bump that one up, and there you go. So now we'll have the old existing thermostat next to the new one. So we can go ahead and remove the broken thermostat card. Now the final step would be to go through all of my automations both in YAML and in Node-RED and replace the entity ID of the thermostat with the thermostat underscore two. That way all my automations start working again. One thing to note is that um, it doesn't have the preset of eco in a way, it just has eco. So you, if you are using that in your automation, you will have to go ahead and modify, either build your own away mode or um, just go to, you can redefine eco as your away mode. Now that we have the thermostat fixed, let's go ahead and add the sensors so we can see what other items this platform provides. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the new platform badness and add it to my sensors.yaml. Again, I have a split configuration. <clears throat> if you don't have a split configuration, then just add it in under your sensor area in your configuration.yaml. But for me, I have a separate YAML file that contains all of my sensor information. I like to add new uh, sensors to the top of my top of my YAML file. So just make sure that you match the indentations with all of the other items you have on here. Since there's no configuration past just the platform, I like to stick mine towards the top. So I'll go ahead and save and update this, and then I will refresh my configuration, restart Home Assistant, and check and see what sensors we see. Again, we'll just check, make sure we didn't make any syntax errors, and restart Home Assistant. All right, now that Home Assistant is restarted, you can go into the sensor list and find what sensors were created. However, unlike the climate device, it's a little bit harder to find, especially if you have a large list of sensors like I do. So what I would recommend is opening up your Nest app, going into settings, and scroll down to the bottom where you have the name of your two devices. So my thermostat's called downstairs, and then I also have a Nest temperature sensor in my bedroom. So I wanna look for those two device names in my list of sensors. So I'm going to, in the sensor entities, I'm going to type in bedroom, and then scroll down to the sensors area. 
then here we go. There's a new sensor called sensor bedroom temperature. Now this was a feature I did not have on my official Nest integration. I could not see the bedroom temperature in that. So that's an advantage that this has over the official one is that you can actually see any sensors that you have connected. I also now have the battery level of that temperature sensor. So that's a great addition that we didn't have before. So then I'll also want to search for downstairs thermostat. So, so I'll still have some existing sensors from the broken integration since I haven't removed it yet. But if I keep looking around, now I'll see I actually have an additional sensor called downstairs thermostat that just shows me that device. So that's great if you in the past had to set up a virtual sensor to read the climate information. You don't have to do that now. You can just use this new sensor dot name of your thermostat. Sorry, the information for the device. Well, there you go. I hope this video helped. I know it was a lot of detail, so thanks for sticking to the end. Remember, if you like this video, please feel free to use the like button. If you didn't get anything out of it, go ahead and dislike it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That helps a lot. I'm working, I'm trying to work harder to make videos faster. I'm getting better in Premiere and I've kind of upgraded some of my equipment. So hopefully it'll make videos a little bit easier to make going forward. So again, if you have any topics you'd like me to cover or if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day. And I hope you, your friends and family are all staying safe during this crazy times. Have a great one.